Hello, everybody, and welcome to James Squared here on Halos in the Infield, the 15th episode, of course. 15 is for Tim Salmon, not Jason Castro, not Luis Guillerme. I don't know why 15 isn't uh, retired yet, along with 16, 17, 27, and 40. It's just ridiculous. Anyway, I'm James Gonzalez here with uh, James Milu. This is, you know, of course, the double-sided part of Two Squared. How are you, Milu? Uh, I'm pretty good. Hey, the Angels are playing better, so I'm a little bit happier, a little more optimistic these days. And we're moving up in the standings, which is always good. <laughs> it's funny how this team, and we'll talk about it later, the last topic, actually, how it dictates our moods. Mood. Yeah. Yeah. It just dictates it. I, I feel like crap when they lose, you know, so many in a row, and then I start not to care. But when we win, it's like positivity, smiles, and everybody notices it. Uh, let's mention our uh, sponsors here. Uh, follow uh, Halos in the Infield here on um, Instagram, X, uh, Facebook. Uh, X, of course, Fernando runs that our account and he has great um insight on the question of the day today was about taylor ward and what the angels should do since he has some years of um control uh if he'll ever get to the all-star status so please answer that um for thursday's question i should say uh and then please subscribe on youtube our podcast here visually and then on believe for the audio podcast uh, and then wherever you can find your podcast. But go to Believe definitely for our podcast there. And also go to no Noble Works Works uh, at 1621 Sinclair Street, Suite B in Anaheim right there, 928806. Uh, I cannot wait because Saturday I'm going to be headed down there, me, Todd, and whomever else. We're going to make those paper bags. We are going to have some suds. Um, they have a new confetti one. I cannot wait to try, Milu. When I heard that, I'm like, hell yeah. Because last year, I remember, they had that cinnamon roast crunch uh, type of beer, and I was all over that. I cannot wait for this confetti one. Uh, and also, 714 tickets, Milu. 714 tickets, 714 tickets. Call today and go tonight. So about 714 tickets, again, there's, you know, no hidden fees. The price you see is the price you're going to get. And they're at 2620 East Catella <laughs> Avenue right there, right across the street from the Honda Center. Uh, make sure to put in that code HITI for 10% off your 714 tickets purchase in the checkout. Also, 5% uh, going forward on each um, purchase. So it's a really great thing. Um, still tickets available for the country weekend, of course, coming up here for the Angels. It's a really, really, really uh, solid move. And also, they have tickets for everything, not just Angels baseball, but other baseball teams wherever in the country. The NFL's coming up. Get your preseason tickets, regular season tickets for any team out there. You, you enjoy it. And then for concerts, among other things. And believe it, the summer season is going to be a lot of concerts out there. Of course, I'm looking at uh, Pink and Cheryl Crow down here in San Diego. And definitely, if I do go, I'm going to get 7 1 for tickets on the horn for that. And now, the new sponsor, uh, mainly on Believe, uh, is Bet Online. Bet Online is your number one source for the NBA and, and NHL playoffs this season. Every stat, every matchup, and even live odds while be, while the games are being played. So I, I love catching that. You know, how many points will, you know, one team score in one, you know, third quarter of the NBA games? Um, whatever else. How many goals will be scored in, you know, the third period of a game? Uh, and then when the game's over, head on over to on their online casino. Uh, to get on a game of blackjack or poker or unwind with one of their uh, 150 slot games. It should be great there. And head over to their website, believe, I'm sorry, uh, betonline.com. 
to get in on the action. Don't forget to use the code uh, BELIEVE uh, for your 50% off uh, welcome bonus for your first deposit. So Bet Online, uh, the game starts here. So shout out to Bet Online for that, definitely. And I can't wait to get my bets in. And uh, so look up Bet Online for all of that. Uh, so James, let's get into the recap of the week that was the Texas two step and the Angels. Well, they didn't step in any, you know, um, piles of anything or get bit by any snakes. I don't think. Uh, it started, of course, with that um, Monday uh, Monday night game on the twentieth of uh, May in in Houston, and the Angels they won nine to three. Anderson pitched very well to get his where or get his record, excuse me, to four and four. Um, Zach Neto had a big home run to uh, start off that or to have that Angels win. Pilar had another uh, single that drove in a run. Uh, Neto had that home run. He loves that fastball, and he had a two-run home run. Willie Cajon brought in a, a single to bring in a run. Paris had a, a single, I should say. Ward had a home run. Uh, uh, Joe Adele uh, doubled in two to make it happen for the Angels there. Um, so you go to Tuesday, and this is where our hearts kind of got broken. Angels did lose 6-5 to five in a the game they should have had. It was in uh, extra innings, and it was just a game where they just left so many on base, but it wasn't the most on this road trip that they did. Uh, Hayter got the win. Estevez got the uh, loss. Uh, Renihifo did homer, but Kyle Tucker, I mean, uh, I'm sorry, I'm reading the wrong thing, aren't I? Um, there it is. I'm sorry. Speaking of um, uh, people left on base, that Saturday uh, we're talking about. Uh, Friday the 17th with the Angels and the Rangers. Um, that was amazing. Because they won five to three, and you thought, okay, they're gonna they're gonna maybe sweep the series. Again, they they won nine to three, so that was good. And then uh, Saturday, um, wow, okay, hold on here, folks. Internet's messed up. Okay, so we talk about Saturday national televised game. The Angels lost three to two. They left. Uh, they were 0 for 18 with runners in scoring position. It was really, really bad. Um, Fulmer got the loss, and that was unfortunate. And again, the Angels just lost a lot of pe- left a lot of people on base. Ward and uh, Adele homered, and that was pretty much all the offense. It spoiled a really good uh, pitching performance there. Sunday they did get the win. Jose Soriano fared very well. Uh, four to one, the uh, final. The Angels took two out of three. There, that was really, really good. There, uh, and to mention, the stars and relievers were really great. Pilar had some career milestones, I believe. That was really good to see. Then that Houston series, Detmers did struggle, uh, but there was a fifth inning to remember. The three home runs. That was really cool to see. Uh, Renhifo did steal a base, but he jammed his middle finger, but it looks like he was just okay. That's the one thing about those oven mitts. They don't really let you move around. There's no uh, movement in there. Uh, Tuesday was a home run derby. Just crazy how that happened. Angels made some mistakes. They lost in 10 innings on that Tuesday. And then Wednesday, the Angels did win 2-1 to one in a pitcher's duel. Uh, Kyrene Paris had his first home run, a two-run shot. That was basically the offense. Uh, Tyler Anderson seems like he's pitching his way out of the um, out of Anaheim via trade. If that happens, I know I mentioned that in Todd's post-game show uh, Wednesday night. But um, the and the bad part about it, and we'll talk about it later. Neto did hurt his elbow, and we'll see how long he's out for. There's disparity on you know how long it is. Uh, but it was good to mention this was a first series win in Houston for the Angels since April of 2022. So, uh, Milu, you want to uh, touch on anything with the Texas two-step? 
Well, yeah, both series were really good, you know, and <clears throat> we kind of got back to playing Angels baseball, Ron Washington's way of Angels baseball, <clears throat> as we know it right now. And we're seeing these kids grow. <clears throat> and it was all about the kids' movement in both, <clears throat> pardon me, series. Uh, you had, you really had the kids, you know, um, Ohapi and Shanwell and Neto, they carried, and Adele, they carried both teams. You had, in the Texas series, you had guys like Pilar, and then who's been a godsend to the Angels so far. Then in the Astros series, you had the whole kids movement. So we're, we're seeing Ron Washington stamp on this team with these two series. We actually won back-to-back -back series for the first time in a long time. So that's that was very telling of the direction of which this team is going. Even though we lost in extras in both series, um, this team fought, you know, and that's that's something that we've seen with this team throughout the season, but they they don't quit. And they play to the very end, win or lose. So I thought the pitching was great too in both series with uh <clears throat> even Sandwall, he's he's been doing very well. And Canning, you know, coming back from injury over the last year, he's he's having a fantastic season so far coming back from uh things. So during these two series, I, I I look at this Angels team and we're going in the right direction. Which in the last few weeks, we've been kind of playing shoddy defense and not really hitting the ball, leaving guys on base. I think in one game, we left uh, 18 men in scoring position, which was a record for the Angels. And uh, I think even, I think it was the Texas series we did that in one of the games. But Saturday, yeah. Yeah, it was Saturday. And, uh, but, you know, you're going to have growing pains with, with a young team like we have now. But I was really impressed with how we pitched and how we played defense and how we plugged different people in into the lineup. And they're starting to produce defensively and offensively. And I was really impressed with Kyron Paris's first major league homer yesterday or Wednesday and that two to one win over the over the series clinching win over the Houston Astros. I thought that was pretty neat to watch him get his first home run, his major league homer. And uh he was very happy about that. So, you know, there's some positives in all of this. And we've moved up, I think, as of right now, as the show rolls on, the Yankees currently are winning 5 nothing over the Mariners, which will be six and a half games back if the Yankees do win this game. And that was in the eighth already. So uh, a lot of positives. We're staying around six to eight games back, but uh, right where we want to be, Probably not where we want to be right now, but right where we want to be toward the all-star break. So maybe we can make some moves or we can just continue to play better baseball. And hopefully we move up in the standings and grab nab first place, which belongs to the Mariners right now. But, you know, I'm not going to count my chickens before they hatch, so to speak. I think I really think this team's on an upward swing right now. We're playing better ball. And all it's to do with Ron Washington and what he kind of promised at the beginning of the season, we're going to play to the division a lot better than the angels had in the past. We're going to go after those division divisional foes. And you're seeing that we've lost two games so far. We only played two series against divisional teams, but you're, you're seeing the Ron Washington effect starting to take hold on this angels team. And uh, uh, I like what I see so far. You know, it's weird. It, it reminds me kind of the start of the season, how they went uh, yeah. four and two after that uh, three game series right. against um, uh, Baltimore, but they went on to sweep uh, uh, Miami. But the roster was definitely different. The lineup was definitely different <laughs> before. Yeah. It was good to see Anderson win a couple of games on this road trip. I mean, I don't think that's ever happened before. On a road no. trip where Tyler Anderson gets two wins in his starts. Uh, he has three wins in a row, by the way. It was Houston, Texas, and uh, Kansas City at home. So, again, he's pitching very, very well. Um, and he's kind of like, like 
he worked on in spring training. He worked on not being as uh, reliant on getting that fastball in there. That's where he would get in trouble. He's relying on his off-speed stuff and his movement. So he's definitely pitching like his idol, Greg Maddox. That's why he wears number 31. So it's really cool to see. I, I really enjoyed that. Um, fortunate thing here in San Diego, the Padre game was rained out in Georgia. So I got to see the Angels here for free. Um, oh, that's cool. Yeah, anytime I don't have to flip on the laptop and put on MOB.TV. Um, and I happened to be out that day anyway. And I didn't want to you know, look at my phone the whole damn time. So that was cool having the Angels there, despite the game being like, you know, the way it went, runners in scoring position, 0 for 18. Uh, you got to kind of see them at least be in games. You know, the two losses, again, it was an extra innings. It wasn't a blowout like years before. Um, I know they still some, fought. Yeah. That's the thing. Um, I know people are saying, oh, I don't like the moral victories and all that crap. But sometimes you have to get them in the season when it's all about development. So that that's my take on that. Uh, you mentioned the standings. So, yeah, the Angels, 20 and 30, fourth place for right now, seven games back of a first place. You have Houston, three games back of first place, Seattle. Houston's five back. And then you have Oakland, seven and a half back. So everyone has lost in the division uh, coming into – Thursday, uh, Texas has lost three straight, like I think you mentioned. So, um, as long as you can stay in things, you know, I, I guess that's a, a good thing. But man, there's just a lot of news with the Angels, and it's unfortunate. Um, with Zach Neto, uh, with his elbow issue, uh, Milu, do you remember any uh, news about that and any status? Well, you know, uh, with Neto's elbow issue, he said, I think post game that he had problems when he was younger with his right elbow, and I guess it's uh, he he heard it somehow in the game uh, on Wednesday. But they say, you know, he, they're back here at home now, and he's going to get an MRI done, and there, there's been no news on whether or not what's going to happen with that. But he said it acts up every once in a while. He said it wasn't, there, there was cause for concern, but he didn't seem too concerned about it. So we'll see. We'll see if it's just something that was uh, just a tweak or we'll, hopefully it's not well, what we fear the most, which is Tommy John, but we'll find out. Yeah. He made but, that fifth inning throw. Yeah. I didn't and see the right throw. After he threw it. He he immediately looked at his elbow and said, "Oh no." Yeah. Oh uh, yeah. So that's that's not a good sign, but who knows? Hopefully it's just something that 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 can be figured out. I don't I don't expect him to play over the next few games though. Right. I'll tell you that much. But I mean, um yeah, that's kind of it sucks in a season where we already have 13 plus players on the IL. So it's just just our luck, isn't it? It's, it's amazing to see. Yeah. Um, I did see him say, yeah, it's a little concerning. He had a the elbow injury when he was younger, right. like you mentioned. But he also said, but I trust the training staff has for me, what the training right. staff has for me. They say it's not too concerning, so I'm in a good spot. Now, we've they seen always that seem to say that. <laughs> We've seen that differentiate definitely before. It's, they spin it. Uh, speaking of injuries, Anthony Rendon, uh, May 20th, had the uh, opportunity to join the team in Houston since he yeah. was home. Uh, and it always seems that way where he's home and uh, and that's about it. He's enjoying golfing and all that. So he returned home to Houston, continues rehab on Monday with the Angels. He's been out since April 20th. The high grade partial tear of his left hamstring members running down the first baseline in Cincinnati. Uh, he said he's been making progress, but yet had, had to be cleared for um, baseball activities. He's starting to walk on the incline on a treadmill, which is a good sign, but there's no timetable for his return just yet. He said, quote, it feels good. Just been coming along slowly, though. We've been rehabbing, but that's the extent of it. 
unfortunately, just trying to keep the hamstring elongated. And that just sounds awful. I don't know. How long do you think he'll be out for more, Milu? <laughs> That's a loaded question. Um, <laughs> more, more, um, more Rendon. That's for sure. Um, the season. <laughs> I hope that's not true because we need him. But with this guy, it's always something. I think he comes back for a, a game or two, then gets hurt again. That's what. It and feels then he'll like. be out for the season. He'll 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 come back for the obligatory. Well, I'll come back for a couple of games, see how it feels. Uh, you know, I feel good, and then he's going to re-injure the same same hamstring or something else is going to happen. That's what it. That's that's what I think. Yeah, um, so and also there was some other news. Amir Garrett was brought back after uh, we thought he was going to get uh, let go. But um, obviously Ron has brought him back, and we'll see how he does. But that was kind of shocking news to me, Milu. Yeah, especially after his last relief appearance against the St. Louis Cardinals where he gave up that, that uh, go-ahead two-run homer after the game was tied. Um, <clears throat> he has good stuff, though. I mean, he had a 5.06 ERA on the season, but he only played in, what, five games or so with the Angels. Um, I guess it's uh, it's not a bad deal. It's a minor league deal. So mm -hmm. he'll go back to Salt Lake, and he'll be uh, thrust into their relief core, and we'll see if he can work out any of the kinks that he had before he comes back up again, but um, we need all the pitching we can get. So it's, it's not totally a bad thing. And like I said, he has some very good stuff. He throws hard as long as he's not trying to fight the opposing team. <laughs> <laughs> and luckily he hasn't really had that. And uh, he's been kind of, kind of mature. I think we haven't seen any blow yeah. up or whatever. So that's good. And also, I don't yeah. want to get into it as much, but just the news about ex-Angel David Fletcher now in the circle of the Otani gambling scandal. I know a lot of people want to talk about that, but I I don't know enough just to get into it, just to know that Fletcher was with another um, former minor league player, Schultz, I think it was his name, and uh, he's linked into that. Uh, remember, Fletcher was traded by the Angels this offseason to the Braves. He's been up and down with the Braves, Triple A, Gwinnett, and back and forth. So, yeah. you have any opinions about that, Milu? Well, not too much has come out about David Fletcher and his dealings with uh, the, the bookie, but um, it's kind of interesting how these different players are starting to come out or different information is starting to come out. And I think it, it wasn't just David Fletcher. We're going to, we're going to hear more about other players that had involvement in this. I hope it's nobody major that we have on the team right now, because that would be a shame, mm -hmm. but it's in, it's in the early phases. <clears throat> and all that was said is that he had, you know, he had ties to the mm -hmm. bookie and, there is nowhere that that was said where he was betting on baseball. So that's a good sign, but still one's got to wonder <laughs> yeah. what's going to go, what's going to go down. So it, there's so much to that story. I think not even, um, yeah, that's, uh, it's... out there just yet. <laughs> Uh, let's get to the homestand that's going to be with the Cleveland Guardians coming in. Remember, Country Weekend, get your cowboy hat Saturday as the post game uh, fireworks, and then the post -game get your, concert with Kit Moore. Yeah, get your country on. Yeehaw. Uh, Can't yeah, wait. I'll, I'll let you do that. Um, get your paper bags. <laughs> that's it. So, again, during the Revolution, Noble, Saturday afternoon around 3. Me, Todd, and others will be around, so be sure to create your own bag when you get there and uh, join us, won't you? Um, that's Saturday, and surprisingly, the Angels have Monday off, Memorial Day off, and then they play three with the New York Yankees. All 638 starts on Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and then to end the month, they're in Seattle 
and again another um divisional opponent finally <laughs> it's weird uh friday the guardians at 33 and 17 they're in first place surprisingly right behind the other surprise of the kansas city royals i mean that that's fun uh logan allen five and two starting for cleveland patrick sandoval two and six he's been snake bitten um for wins this year but sometimes it's been his fault but he's pitching He's been pitching better as of late, though. So we'll see if he can avoid that big inning on Friday. Now, Saturday is uh, BB for um, Tanner BB of the Guardians there. He's 2-1 and one against Soriano, who's 2-4. and four. And that's definitely a matchup. I'm going to be definitely looking forward to a pitching duel there, hopefully. Soriano, he's got the heart. He's got the determination. And it was everything that we wanted to see from him working on it at spring training to be a starter. And now with the injury to Silseth, he's been sworn in. And he's been one of the best on the staff. It's been great to see. Um, the afternoon special on Sunday has Reed Detmers. He's 3-4. and four. High ERA. He's got to keep that ball down. And when that uh, you know changeup comes across... It, it, it's really bad across the plate. Uh, Lively, yes, Lively will be going for uh, Cleveland. He has a 3-2 and two record. Ben Lively, he's 32 years of age with a 2.84 ERA and seven starts. He's a really good pitcher, and that's uh, really unfortunate. So hopefully the Angels can get to him on a day game. I hear he has uh, a lively fastball. There you go. <laughs> uh, for the pitching matchups for New York, I doubt they're out yet because there's a day in between. So with uh, Cleveland and New York, how do you think this homestand will go? For me, I'm always thinking negative because the Yankees, they got all that power in that lineup. The rotation's kind of filling out there. My guess is that the Angels go, I will say the opposite of the road trip. I think they go two and four. What do you think? Well, I uh, this is weird. I just got an update from the Angels right now on my phone Mm-mm. saying it's country weekend. What are the, the odds of that happening right when we're doing this show, right? Nope. Um, well, I think I'm with you. I think I, I don't think it's going to be. The theme of this, I'll tell you this, the theme of this homestand is keep it rolling. Mm-hmm. Just play fundamentally better like we have been and good things will happen. Pitch well, defend well, and hit well, just like we, we've been doing. I hope we can stay hot. But I, I'm with you. I, I'm, I'm going to say I'm going to give us three wins. That'd be nice to split. Yeah. Because you're playing two first place teams, right? And it's going to be hard. Yeah, and without Neto too, supposedly for right. the first two games or whatever the case may be, he's been catching on fire lately. It's just the worst time for him to go down, honestly. Because then you got to bring yourself back up after being right. out. That's going to be the toughest part for Neto. Oh, that sucks. I'm going to go with the split. I'm forever the optimist, you know. So. Uh, so yeah, three wins. That that sounds fair because we have been playing better. The pitching has been a lot better, aside from a couple people. Uh, but yeah, it's going to be tough. And these are two of the best teams in the AL right now, or in baseball. So we'll see how it goes. I I just I just hope that I know Ron will have these these guys ready to play. They That's just got to execute. It's just got to No more uh, calling for bunts people aren't ready for. Maybe that. Yeah, that's... no more. And that's a whole other issue. You know, it's uh, you got to get the ball down. But, you know. That, that's led to wildfire on yeah. uh, Angel social media. <laughs> right. That, that, that's, uh, that, that whole situation is uh, uh, very, very, it's a loaded situation. We'll, we'll say that. Yeah, that, that's definitely true. All right, so let's get to Joe Adele because he's been putting up some great numbers, and shout-out to Andrew 
for um, uh, showing this to us in the chat. You know his speed. Uh, 98 speed there. He's very, very good. This is off baseball savant. His arm straight is arm strength is really good as well. Um, the defense you've been seeing him play better defense. Uh, you know, climbing walls or diving, whatever the case has been, he's been really, really good. But all of his batting stats is, or stats have been pretty good too. Uh, bat speed is elite. The barrel's really, really good. Pretty good hard hit um, and sweet spot uh, percentages. The slugging is there. The batting average is there. The OBA. Uh, the arm value, yeah, just on the fielding just has to get a little better. But other from that, he's been very, very impressive. He's hit some key home runs, which has been very awkward to see. But um, whenever the Angels need that power, he's been able to show it. And that's been interesting to note. Uh, so, Milu, uh, before I look at his stats, uh, what do you think of Joe Adele? Because when he's been given playing time, you could tell now. Instead of, him, instead of him being sent back and forth to Salt Lake City like the last couple of years, with playing time, with starts, because of injury, he's been breaking out. Well, we're, we're seeing... Joe Adele actually come into his own this season. You know, he's making plays. He made that great catch the Rob. Uh, I think who was, it? I don't, I don't, I forget who it was, but he robbed somebody of a Homer in the middle game of that series. And, and <clears throat> against the Astros, he, he made a fantastic throw to save the game in that extra inning debacle that we had in Texas. Um, He's doing all the right things right now, except for his base running is starting to get better. But he's he's becoming the first round pick that he is with the Angels that he was once the Angels picked him. So that, that's great to see. He's only twenty five years old. He's hitting two thirty four with nine homers, twenty two RBIs. You know, uh, the powers developing and you're you're seeing a lot of the, the five tools that Adele was drafted on. So <clears throat> it's a good thing to see he's getting the playing time and we're seeing the results. So uh, it, it's it's fun it's fun to watch him play now. I never thought I would say that. But yeah, Joe Adele has been a pleasant surprise. To this Angels team this season. Eight, he has uh, eight stolen bases, by the way. His OPS yeah. is 806, which is not too bad because. Right. Um, and he's taken four walks the last uh, seven games. He has struck out eight times, but, uh, or sorry, nine times, but at least he's taken the walks. You can kind of tell um, that's been a good thing for him. Uh, so it, it's really good to see. Um, let's get to our next topic, and this one was the anniversary. Uh, on Wednesday, 20 years ago, uh, Artie Marino bought the Angels, and at first it was really great, you know, having a uh, Mexican American owner uh, in the league. I still remember the press conference, he gave everybody red sombreros, you know, claiming that he yeah. was a real, you know, Mexican. You know, he was really good with the community. Then after a while, everything went to shit. It was, it was unfortunate. Just everything went bad. Uh, just everything got worse in a way. The spending habits, the minor league system, the fan experience, it went from first to almost worse now. And it's just been really, really confusing. Um, and he uh, was going to sell, but uh, didn't it last season. And that's been unfortunate. Um, it's got the unfinished business, like you mentioned. But yeah, in 2003, May 22nd, he purchased the Anaheim Angels at the time uh, from the Walt Disney Company. Uh, many felt like, yeah, this was the exciting time for Angels baseball. They just won the World Series, and then all of a sudden, um, they had an 03 season that was just like a injured plague season. And then... Um, you know, that offseason, getting all the guys they did, you know, Guillen, 
uh, Guerrero, uh, Cologne, Escobar. That was just an amazing, um, amazing time there. Um, he paid $103.5 million to buy him more than two decades ago. The success was initially very well. Remember, they used to have three million, um, you know, fans come in, including us back in the day. But the franchise just has been struggling on and off the field lately with controversies, including with him. It's just been really, really uh, bad at the same time. And it's the reason why we have these uh, paper bags that we'll see here. So, um, let me ask you, Milu, real quick, just about. When he bought the Angels, what were you expecting back then? And uh, were you shocked by the success that they had? And then um, the way that the downfall has been, did that kind of surprise you uh, from when he first bought the team? Well, you know, when they, when he bought the team from Disney, when Disney decided to move on from the Angels, I, I, it was like, well, the, and he was he bought the team. The first thing he did was lower beer prices at the stadium, which I thought, wow, this is this guy's ahead of his time. At no other stadium have they lowered beer prices at any stadium at, at around that time. So that was cool. I'm like, well, this guy, he must be for real. Then he signed Vladdy and Bartolo Colon along with GM Bill Sto Stoneman at the time. And I was like, this guy, I love this guy. I think he's going to do some good things. He's going to carry on the Angels tradition of winning in the last few years. And then <clears throat> things were going well. We're winning, you know, from from that time in 03, we had that terrible team. Then 04, we started winning. Vladdy gets the MVP, Bartello, Cy Young, um, all the way to 09. It was, you know, we were winning. He felt good about our owner. He was giving us the pieces that we needed to continue to win, and everybody felt good. Then around, i say, 2011, after we signed Pujols at C.J. Wilson, we were still expected to win, and things started to change. Vernon Wells, Josh Hamilton, all those guys. And he, he was still there for the fans, but you didn't hear much about he didn't make any improvements to the stadium. He made a lot of promises. He was good in the community still. Didn't improve the stadium. Prices started going up again. Uh, it was, you just didn't see much of him. He was out in the open. He was, he would greet fans, but, you know, he, he's nice in person. But, you know, I don't know. It just started going downhill when we started signing people like Vernon Wells. And then you saw you saw the subtle decline of the mentality that we, the winning mentality that we had. We started losing, and then stories come out of the you know the minor league guys. He wasn't providing housing for them. The equipment was shoddy. The facilities needed work, especially in Tempe Diablo in Arizona and Tempe. We have like one of the oldest facilities, spring training facilities in Major League Baseball right now. So <clears throat> you, you saw the steady decline, and, and then until now, he was going to sell the team. And he's all, nope, I'm taking it back. For what reason? You know, and that's a whole other issue. But it, it, it's, it's just a shame, you know, and it's the 20th anniversary. There's no hope in sight. There's no light at the end of the tunnel, as we discussed. And it's like, what happened? He's an ad man from Arizona, you know? He has people <laughs> under him that focused on the face of the team, but not on the fans or the players. It's just a shame. And it's, uh, <laughs> he's becoming one of the worst owners we ever had. I, I would say he is the worst owner we ever had. I'd rather have Disney buy us back, actually. At least a, we won a World Series. We were winning under Disney. Or even Giandri. Can we dig him up? And can he come back? 
this owner. Sorry, Gene. Sorry, Mr. Autry. You know, it's just, it's, it's just been, even the last few years, it's just getting worse and it's just terrible. And it's, it's funny that you, you bring the 20th anniversary up because now we're, we, we're resorting to paper bags to express ourselves at games and shirts that say sell. By the way, get that merch on uh, he, Halos in the Infield on exactly. the Etsy, uh, brand, <laughs> now that you mentioned that. So I looked it up. Um, Good segue. Um, Artie yeah. bought the team for $183 million at the time, $0.5 million. Right. Now they're worth, according, $2.2 billion. That was January of this year. I would think it's a little bit less now without Otani, um, with the injuries, with the play. Right. With the, the location is great, but the stadium isn't. Uh, location. Everywhere, yeah. like you mentioned. I don't know what's going to happen for the future if the team moves, whatever the case is. Um, that's the reason we're going to have these bags uh, on Saturday and all weekend long. Join the revolution. The revolution, the heady revolution. And it's That's gonna a, be something. definitely. Um, now that you mention it, I, I had one last question, one last topic here that comes up. So I looked it up and BR walk off. That's um, the Bleacher Report walk off. I saw this on Instagram. And they said the top 10 most depressed fan bases so far. And they have Oakland at one, the A's, as they make their way out of there to Sacramento. John Fisher exploring, trading his young, great closer already. And he still has like six years of control left, I want to say. There's expectations that they'll trade him for whatever they Terrible. can get. Uh, the Angels are at number two. The White Sox at number three. The Rockies at four. The Pirates at five. The Mets at six, the Marlins at seven, the Tigers eight, the Reds at nine, and the Blue Jays at ten. Now, to go through the teams here, you have the A's, the Angels, the White Sox, the Rockies, the Pirates, Marlins, and the Reds. They all have owners who are either cheap, controversial, they won't spend, or in the case of the Mets and the Tigers and Blue Jays, they're overspending or spending on the wrong players. And each have an issue. Uh, you know, the Athletics, the Angels, the White Sox, they all have issues with their ballpark. You know, I think the only good ballpark on this list is probably the, the best one would probably be the Pirates, I would say. City Field's okay in, in, the, in Queens. And then... The Blue Jays just renovated uh, Rogers Center, and that's been a three-year process. It looks very nice, though. But, man, for the reasons you just talked about with Artie, it feels like maybe the Angels are the most depressed fan base. I certainly feel it for the last, you know, nine, ten years not making the postseason and not having a winning record for most of that time either, not even being close to winning, you know, having the two MVPs and not being close to the playoffs. That's just ridiculous so my question to you and you know give your true answer here milu is the angels fan base the most depressed right now other um over oakland well that, that's it's debatable but you got to feel for the the fans in oakland their their uh, team is getting ripped away from them pretty much so i with with this list i agree yeah the a's they're going through a lot more than we are and they've actually won more than we have in, those, in recent years. So, um, yeah, the, the the Angels are right where they should be. It just feels that we should be number one on that list because of all the things that have happened and and how big of fans we are of this team, and we, we just feel like we should be number one. But it's it's debatable. I mean, you can interchange them, I guess. I, I was. Say, you know, White Sox, number three. I would say the Rockies, top five, of course. Uh, uh, they have no direction either. I don't know what their owner is thinking. They trade after they traded away Trevor Story and Nolan Arenado, they were signaling the white flag on a whole 10 years. So 
yeah, I don't know what's going on there. So, um, but as far as the angels, I think, I think we're right where we should be on that list. And you got to feel for the people in Oakland though, even yeah, though there are, yeah, it's, it's, it's sad. It's just terrible. I watched those videos where the fans are there still. Yeah. They're getting overcharged for every damn thing. Right. They're saying, hey, you can't say Oakland. You can't do anything that's Oakland, even though they, they chant, let's go Oakland. They changed the 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 chant of let's go Oakland to let's go Ace. And then the team is yeah. leaving to Sacramento, but you can't say Sacramento. And they're on their way to Vegas, even though there's no shovel yet. The, the fans in Oakland, they have one... One thing they're hanging on right now is like, hey, the stadium hasn't been built yet in Vegas. So if right. we can get if we can get a new owner to come in and keep them around, that's the only hope. And they're still thinking that, even though it's likely not going to happen. Again, for the Angels no real, here, yeah, they have no real identity right, right. now. They don't know yeah. which city they belong to. You know, it, it's sad. The, they're they're going to move to Utah for a couple or. Um, <clears throat> Sacramento for a few years, maybe Utah, maybe Las Vegas, maybe Oakland. We, we nobody seems to know where they're going to move to. You know, I mean, permanently, and that sucks. It's amazing how the last couple of years NFL and now MLB has all these moving teams going on, and yeah. um, well, not yet for MLB, but this would be the first one out of a couple. Um, I think they want what we want is for the owner to sell and yes. to invest into the communities that they're in now somehow. Uh, no matter how bad, no matter how bad it is. Um, so that's all we have here. Um, again, go to uh, believe dot com for the visual, the audio podcast, YouTube for the visual. Go to No Boil Works. And I think I'll be there on Saturday around three to whenever uh, to make the paper bags to um, try that new confetti uh, beer. That should be awesome. Everybody likes us. I mean, nobody likes the sweet stuff. I only do when it comes to that stuff. Um, yeah, I, I I know I won't be disappointed when it comes to uh, it comes beer. to there. Yeah. And you know, just to explore certain things are cool. Explore selling arty. Um, and please, yeah, go to uh, seven one four tickets as well. Seven one four tickets. Seven one four tickets. You can. Yes, <laughs> I know you can. Was it called today? Go tonight, or you can call today and go tonight. Yes, yeah, that's what it is. Call today. I'm. I was trying to figure out what um, Roger says it kind of differently. I guess sometimes on <laughs> anime theory. Yeah, you can call yeah. today. And go tonight. That's what it is. But I won't yeah. uh, listen to that uh, guy. Um, also, go to um, betonline.com. Again, uh, the new sponsor here, uh, the number one source for MEA and NHL playoffs this season for betting every stat, every matchup. Uh, right. When, when that game's over, of course, go to the online casino and get in on games of blackjack or poker or slots. Uh, don't forget to put in that promo code BELIEVE, all caps, I believe, uh, and get your 50% welcome bonus. Bet online, the game starts here. So this has been the 15th episode of James Squared. We'll see you next time here on Halos in the infield. Later. Let's folks. get some more series wins. Go Halos. <laughs>